Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak. Before I get started with this video, I want to show you a hobbyist tank that uh, has been watching my videos. And he sent me an email with a picture of his tank, which I thought would be interesting to everybody. Uh, dear Dr. Novak, I have followed your YouTube videos for a long time and learned a lot about filtration systems for a closed system. Following your advice, I use under gravel filter plate as a plenum. I use special kitty litter clay from Walmart as the base and pool filter sand on it. The total depth of the sand bed, including the kitty litter, is about four inches. I also use Flovo Stratum Red as a laterite substitute. I put Stratum Red in between two layers of kitty litter. I use some gravel and 40% uh, water from an established tank as I had to put two juvenile angelfish uh, in the tank right away. I also use some duckweed as a floating plant. It has been in operation for about a week now. Fish and plants, Anubias and Java fern, are doing well. I have been changing about 10% water every day. Just wanted to share with you uh, this with you. I am attaching a picture of the tank for your review and comments. I would appreciate if you had any advice that I should follow. I want to avoid any infestation of algae. Little algae are fine. Thank you for your very educational YouTube channel and the advice you provide through it. Best regards and I'll leave their name out. But uh, yeah, the only advice I can give to him is uh, he does a 10% water change every day. That's not really necessary. Once a week, 10% water change would be okay. Other than that, just let the tank cycle and be very patient. But I did want to show you this. that uh, Some people keep asking me about certain things, and I thought I would definitely uh, make it so everybody... Who, who asked me about using sand or something and kind of go off of what he's doing. Okay, so that's enough of that. And now we're going to get into the nitrogen cycle. Hello, everybody. Uh, now we're going to get into the nitrogen cycle as it really is. You can go on the Internet you can go in books and you'll look and basically it tells you the nitrogen cycle very simply as ammonia to nitrites and to nitrates. Nitrates has to be taken out by water changes or simulation by plants taking it out. But that's basically what they're showing and, and telling everybody. But that is really not the full nitrogen cycle as we know it. The full nitrogen cycle takes care of everything. In other words, nitrates are also taken care of in the full nitrogen cycle, where the hobbyist should be doing nothing to get rid of nitrates and uh, phosphates. These two byproducts can be taken care of, and they, and they are taken care of in natural systems. But uh, some may say, well, plants will take care of the nitrates, but that's not necessarily true. For example, here in Florida, we have lots of lakes and ponds with no plant life. And yet the nitrogen cycle is carried on. Uh, there's snakes, alligators, very large fish, you name it. They're all uh, uh, doing just fine. So how do they do it if they don't have a lot of plant life in there? Emergent or submergent plant life. Well, that's because they're completing the full nitrogen cycle as we know it. Trouble is, the full nitrogen cycle isn't being told to hobbyists because it's not all understood. And in other words, knowledge does not mean understanding. And that's the case here. We all seem to have the knowledge, but a lot of people don't have the understanding. Now, nitrates have always been something as the end byproduct that we all try to get rid of because we know that nitrates and phosphates are a problematic with uh, algae. They're bad for salt water, it's bad for fresh water. The problem is understanding how the nitrogen cycle progresses beyond nitrates. And there are bacteria that take care of nitrates. Why aren't you told this? Why aren't you told how to do it? Well, 
we have tried, or manufacturers have tried, by ba you know making biodenitrators, which is nothing but a uh, uh, add-on maybe to your uh, canister filter or aquarium. Sarah, Sarah made a filter called Sarah Titan, and the Titan could uh, connect up to a uh, biodenitrator, which had pills, and this would make the glucose for the bacteria. Trouble is, this didn't go over very good with hobbyists because it's too hard to regulate. It's, uh, it was a problem, and it just, the, uh, bile denitrators don't go over. There were other bile denitrators being made too. Some had a little box with like these little rubber particles that went in it that was supposed to be buried in your substrate. Uh, these things all came and went because they were trying to solve the problem the wrong way, okay? But there was a manufacturer out there from Germany that came up with a substrate or came up with a medium, and this medium was called Soprex. And for those of you who haven't been in the hobby that long, this was a long time ago, was shown in a magazine called Practical Fish Keeping when it first came out. And that's a magazine from the United Kingdom that you, we could get it here in the United States. I got it. But they were the first ones, if I recall, that showed that particular center glass medium. It was round rings, almost looking like that of the Eheim ceramic rings. But this was centered glass. And the whole object behind that was to complete the full nitrogen cycle as we know it. In other words, they would use specialized bacteria inside the medium to break down the nitrates like they were supposed to be broken down. This medium had some very wild claims that, let's say, a shoebox of it could actually filter an entire pond. The advertisements are right there in Practical Fish Keeping. This was years ago. Did it accomplish the complete nitrogen cycle? Yes and no. And because of that, it um, really didn't go over that big. I even used it myself. I even bought it myself to use it. And it didn't seem to work for me. That doesn't mean it didn't work. That's why I said yes and no because they showed through tests and lab tests and stuff and things like that, that it did work, that it did eradicate the nitrates. It did the full nitrogen cycle. So we know manufacturers have known about the full nitrogen cycle, which is never really shown to us. We think the full nitrogen cycle uh, can complete it by a water change or by plants, but that's not really it. The full nitrogen cycle, full nitrogen cycle can't be taken care of by all bacteria. So this is a hard nut to crack. So as the years went by, people kept making new and new mediums to put in our aquariums that will try to accomplish the full nitrogen cycle as we know it. Some of it works, some of it doesn't work. So I don't know what the percentage you would say of those that would say it worked or those who haven't. What they're trying to do is make an anoxic filter. That's what they're trying to do. This is not as easy as you think. If it was, there'd be no problem today. Manufacturers would say, here's a filter medium out there, use it, and it's going to finish the complete nitrogen cycle and you'll have no problems. And at the end of every month when you do a water change, you're going to find out you don't have any nitrates and your phosphates are going to be low or your nitrates will be real low. Your phosphates are going to be extremely low and you're never going to have a problem. Not like today where two people can have the exact same setup and one guy could say, well, my nitrates are 20 parts per million before a water change. And another guy could say, well, I have nitrates up to 35 parts per million. See, your nitrogen cycle isn't being completed. So they're trying to crack this nut by inventing or coming up with filter mediums that will do the complete nitrogen cycle as we know it. 
but it's not quite that easy. And for the hobbyists, they don't understand it. So right now, the nitrogen cycle, which I will explain, and then we will go further into it. We all know that uh, heterotrophic bacteria get their carbons from glucose, methane, sucrose, etc., right? Organic molecules, mineralization of organic molecules. Okay, so we know this. Then we have the nitrification. That starts up. We have autotrophic bacteria get carbons from inorganic compounds like ammonia. Okay, nitrosomatis. There are five genus, two of marine strains of those. So out of those five, three are freshwater and two are marine. Of what we know of that particular bacteria that take care of ammonia. After that, that gets broken down into nitrites. As we all know, go on the internet, you'll look it up. This is nitrosporea. Three genesis, genus of that all contain marine strains. So out of those three, they're all capable of marine. And this is called chemotolotrophic. Okay, after that, that makes nitrates, okay, as an end byproduct. But it doesn't stop there, like people think. No, you don't need plants. No, you don't need water changes. Nitrates are broken down naturally in freshwater systems. And there are, there are what, what is called, there are three types of oxygen requirements in bacteria that you have to understand of, of available oxygen. We all know there is a type of bacteria that requires no oxygen, and these are anaerobic bacteria. But there are three types of oxygen require bacteria. That's all that there is. They require oxygen and different ones. Uh, obligate anaerobes. These are oxygen require bacteria, which would be the ones who break down ammonia into nitrite. Factutative, grow in the presence or absence of oxygen. These bacteria exist and we need to utilize them. Microaerophilic bacteria grow best at very low levels of oxygen. Okay, something that's not explained to hobbyists is that bacteria that grows. Then we have aerotolerant anaerobes, oxygen not required for growth, but not harmful if present. The oxygen will not kill them. Unlike uh, anaerobic bacteria, once exposed to oxygen, it dies. So there are your three oxygen requirements for bacteria that we must meet. Now this is hard to get, and this is what we're everyone's been trying to conquer, is trying to get this bacteria and the oxygen requirements absolutely perfect. Okay? Microaerophile bacteria are... My, uh, microorganisms that require oxygen but their environment must have very low oxygen. So we have that bacteria that's not talked about. That bacteria exists in the nitrogen cycle. That bacteria has three paths to go. Okay, that microaerophile bacteria that exists. It has one path Assimilatory denitrification, anaerobic zones, anaerobic heterotrophics reduce nitrates back to ammonia and no further. Inefficient use of phosphorus for energy results in an abundance amount of phosphates. This is called fermentation. Sulfate reducing bacteria, methogenic bacteria. It can go that route to break down nitrates, which is non-oxygen bacteria. We know this because we've seen this in deep sand bed filters. 
that they carry this bacteria and assimilatory denitrification can happen, but it is making ammonia. It's got another path that could go, the bacteria. It's called dissimilative denitrification. Anoxic zone, facultative anaerobes, reduces nitrates back to gaseous elements, N2, uh, denitrogen. N2 is nitrogen. 78% of our atmosphere is nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen is gassed off out of the aquarium immediately, back into the atmosphere where it belongs. It's constantly trying to gas off out of water. Okay, bacteria in oxygen-free zones, 30 times more efficient. That bacteria, factutata bacteria, is 30 times more efficient than bacteria in oxygen-free zones. Better use of phosphorus and only trace amounts of phosphates. So they don't eliminate phosphates completely, they only make trace amounts of phosphates. Factutative anaerobes can be generated fermentation process and behave as respiratory heterotrophs. Okay, that is the second path it can take. The third path it can take, is which a lot of hobbyists do, is it takes both paths. Because we set up our aquariums, and this bacteria, microaerophile bacteria, can go, you do both processes. It will either go to a path of no oxygen or a path of very little oxygen, as I explained to you the three oxygen requirements. This bacteria happens in most of our aquariums and takes the path of both paths. So it is doing assimilatory denitrification and it is doing dissimilative denitrification. Okay, who wins out depends on how much nitrate you are going to be left at, let's say, the end of the month. We all know that plants can use nitrates by a reduction process of taking the nitrate and reducing it into nitrites and then reducing it once again into ammonia, the food source that it needs. We also have learned through my videos that some plants, like cryptochorine, cannot utilize nitrates, and they take it in, and at some point, if there's a uh, something that will stress the plant or a big change in the plant, it will get crypt rot. So we understand that not all plants can use nitrates. We do understand also there are plants out there, such as uh, your, some of your floating plants, like water hyacinth, for example, take up like 72% of their food source is nitrates and very little is ammonia. But we can't put all these plants in our aquarium. A lot of aquariums have very little plants to no plants. So what do you do, which I have had, what do you do if you have your aquarium it has no plants in it at all, you have plastic plants, you have your SpongeBob square pants, little bubbler, and there's nothing wrong with this. A lot of people have done this. They use plastic plants. They don't want to, want to deal with live plants. How do you complete that nitrogen cycle? Well, you're being told to, of course, water changes. But that's not the right way of doing it. The cycle keeps going beyond nitrates. So why aren't you being told how to do it? So you don't have to do all the water changes, and maybe you can go, instead of once a month, or once every week, or whatever your, your water change uh, husbandry is, you maybe can go once every two months, or three months, because your nitrates are not building up. It's because understanding how to Make an environment that's friendly to the bacteria we need is not as easy as people thought. Okay, if you've been watching my channel, you saw me set up the aquarium and everything, you've been learning more about the anoxic filter, you've been learning more about plenums and how they work and why we are using one. We are creating the environment for micro aerophilic bacteria to grow and remember they grow best in very low levels of oxygen one of the three oxygen requirements for the nitrogen cycle to complete itself 
but you have to make an environmental friendly environment for those bacteria to do the dissimilative denitrification, mainly outcompeting the assimilatory denitrification. Okay, that's what we want. So you're still probably going to have both, but you just want to have more of one thing than the other thing of, as far as consuming nitrates and producing very little phosphates. So manufacturers know this, and what they're trying to do is invent a medium that you can use somewhere in a sump, a canister filter. I mean, look at all the mediums we have today that we didn't have 20, 30, 40 years ago, and you'll know exactly what I'm saying. You know, a bell should go off in your head saying, yeah, you know, they're making all these mediums here. Uh, some of them resemble a, uh, a sponge, but yet they're made out of a ceramic material, but they look like a hardened sponge. Uh, this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to get the oxygen levels to the right amount to create the correct bacteria, microaerophile bacteria, that will consume the nitrates to finish the nitrogen cycle. But for years and years and years, people didn't understand this. I started researching this 30 plus years ago. Why can't we complete the nitrogen cycle? What is the big hassle? It was a hassle because you have to understand that you have to make a specialized environment for the cycle to complete itself. And this is where I came up with, I didn't invent the plenum, I admit that. I just made it better, you know, uh, that it, so it would work more in our favor than it would in the opposite direction and destroy our aquariums. The same way with the BCB basket. It was a way of making anoxic conditions inside the basket where it could take these ions and utilize these ions or prevent the nitrogen cycle from happening altogether. If you get ammonia out of the pitcher, you're not going to have nitrites and nitrates. Okay, but you are going to have all three classes of bacteria growing in your aquarium in the BCB basket or in your aquarium that uses a plenum. And I like to have the slow moving plenum because I found out it works a little better than just a plenum, which you can use. But you know, as we all know, there's good, better, best. It's like anything else that's out there. You can improve on something just a little more. So the complete nitrogen cycle is done through bacteria. It is not done through water changes. It is not done through plants. It is done through bacteria bacteria. Nitrates are just another byproduct that needs to be broken down. It either can be broken down into ammonia, it either can be broken down into nitrogen, which goes into the atmosphere, or it will be broken down into both ammonia and nitrogen. Or it won't be broken down at all and it becomes a byproduct that must be expelled out of the whole system through either plants or water change. So the nitrogen cycle is completed not by water changes and not by plants. It's done through bacteria. Every manufacturer out there, Tetra, all the big manufacturers, all know this. They all have PhDs out there working for them. They all know this. They're trying to make a medium that works exactly like a plenum does or work like a BCB basket. They're trying to make a medium that will react just exactly what I have done. 
And once they do it, trust me, once they do it, it's going to be advertised in every aquarium magazine on the internet. It's going to be all over the place because they want to make money. And that's why when they make these filter mediums, they always tell you after a certain time limit to get rid of them and buy new medium because it's very hard to clean some of these mediums that are have these cracks and micro pores in them. It's very hard to clean those and it's a big hassle. They know it. You're, you're going to try to clean it. You're going to try to get all that uh, polymeric uh, adhesive that's clogging up all these pores after time. Uh, they know that because they know the flow of water going through those filter material is still too fast. It needs to be slowed down. But then they don't want to turn it into a bile denitrator. So, the nitrogen cycle as it is, is completely done by bacteria. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to do test right in front of you of my aquarium. I'm going to use two different strip test strips. I'm going to use the API and that will show nitrogen. It goes from zero, then it goes to 20 parts uh, per million. And I will show you the uh, uh, quali test strips. And this test strips go down to nitrate of 10 parts per million. So it goes, it, it shows you a little lower than the API test kits. And I'm going to show you right away a dip. And what you are going to see is you're going to see that there are no nitrates. And of course, once you don't have nitrates, I know what people are going to say. Well, that's because of the plants. The plants are using up. It's, it's, it's got to be the plants. It's got to be the plants. No, it's not the plants. Okay, it, it's, it's not the plants. It is a matter of the plenum that I have made and the BCB basket that I have made that's helping keep the phosphates extremely low and nitrates extremely low to non-existent where the test kits, at least the test kits that you're, I'm using here are not showing anything as far as, because what I have done in this aquarium, if you watch my videos, me setting it up, I have shown you that you can set up an aquarium exactly like I show you and you can have success too. Okay, that's what I'm showing you. You are now completing the nitrogen cycle with bacteria. You are not completing it with plants and you are not completing it with water changes. You are using it the way it does in a natural system. And this is how natural system works. We have a lot of lakes here in Florida. They don't have plants. How does the nitrogen cycle continue? especially if you have alligators and stuff pooing in the water along with snakes and everything. How is that being completed? It's being completed through bacteria. And as long as there's enough oxygen to complete everything and oxygen goes at the right le levels and those big lates, it will take care of the nitrogen cycle so it doesn't end up crashing the whole system. That's what we are doing here. We are developing a system to complete the complete cycle with bacteria the way it does naturally. Not the way we hobbyists have been told or we hobbyists think it should be done with plants and through water changes. So I hope you understand that is the way the nitrogen cycle works. It doesn't stop at nitrates. It continues on with bacteria to further take the nitrates and can turn that nitrates into ammonia, can turn it into nitrogen, or it winds up being if one cancels out the other, you just end up with building up of nitrates and keeps building it up, being, building it up, building it up, as we know, because you have not set up your aquarium correctly. Let's face facts. If you haven't done it correctly, 
your nitrates are just going to keep building up and building up and building them. Or you are adding too much food stuff and your bacteria load isn't high enough to take care of it. And as we can see, we are now using our canister filters and so on as biological filters. And we're using our hang on the back as biological filters because manufacturers have realized the way we are doing things is not 100% right. We need more and more biological filter, which in the past we really didn't. Remember in the, in the past for some of the old timers, we'll tell you, we used under gravel filters and then we had a hang on the back filter that, that picked up all the junk and that was it. We had huge biological filters because our whole substrate was a biological filter. Okay? But we steered away from that because somebody started bad-mouthing it because, once again, manufacturers changed the formula by adding more and more oxygen to the substrate when they had it right to begin with by adding just small amount of movement of water underneath the under gravel filter to make like a plenum. That was the right way to do it, to keep oxygen levels low so the bacteria, micro aerophile bacteria, will begin to grow and finish the nitrogen cycle. So we actually screwed ourselves by thinking we were doing something good when we actually did something completely wrong and we messed up everything. So now we're trying to correct what we did wrong without going back to the old days and saying, you know, people, we just had it wrong. Go back to, to making a plenum like you did back in the 60s and, and 70s and the 40s and 50s. Just go back to the old way. See, but they don't want to do that. They, they, want, they, they don't want to go backwards with these under gravel plates because they got a bad reputation by people. But where's all the evidence? Where's all the scientific evidence to prove what was happening was wrong? Because all they said, it, well, it just becomes a big, huge uh, a filter and it will suck in the dirt. And, and when it sucks in the dirt, it's just acting like a uh, canister filter or a hang on the back filter. And, well, that's why they came up with the filter, you know, tube, uh, Python did, to clean, clean it out. And you're ready to go again. So anyhow, that's all I wanted to tell you. That is the nitrogen cycle and its complete form. It is all done through bacteria. It's not done through plants. It's not done through water changes. You can come up with zero to near zero nitrates if you follow what I say. And you will come up with to near zero or zero phosphates if you just listen to what I say and utilize the bacteria that's already going to grow in your aquarium naturally. Just make an environment for that bacteria to grow. Just like my aquarium. You should be successful. But you have to understand the microbiology behind it. Okay, until next time, thank you for watching. I hope you understood the real nitrogen cycle of how it should be written out. That yes, there is bacteria that take care of nitrates. And from there, uh, water changes in plants are not necessary. Bacteria will take care of everything. You just have to create the right environment for that bacteria to complete the full nitrogen cycle. Until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching.